Hey, good afternoon, Justice Warriors. It is just about 12.30 on Friday, November 18th. And thank you for joining me in my afternoon video about Kylie Rodney and Trinity Bacchus, primarily. Uh, everything I say is my opinion only, and it's surely for the sake of conversation and discussion. Hopefully, educational maybe maybe not entertaining so i just always like to give my disclosure that yes i am speaking to things which may be controversial so it is simply my opinion and should be taken with a grain of salt right all right so in my video this morning i mentioned how many similarities da -da 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 -da, can't talk how many similarities there are between these two 16 year olds that passed away in Nevada County this last summer and fall well one was just last week so <sighs> I had a list of 10 and so I went back to that list and it quickly grew into 20 and I think close to 30 and I'm going to leave out some of the basic essentials, like that they were the same age, that they were both Caucasian, that they both had family pets that were uh, canines. Let's look at this one. It's not solid, but both are alleged to have contusions to their heads. Both were missing persons. Both were discovered outside. Both were found later deceased. Both were with their friends or what I like to call frenemies when they went missing. Both were under the influence, allegedly, according to the frenemies or friends, whatever you want to call them. Both have similar physical characteristics, tall, slender, beautiful, long hair, green eyes. Green eyes are rare, very rare, okay? Both of these 16-year-olds are, or were, big sisters, so they both have younger siblings. Actually, they both have younger half-siblings, and neither one of them has an older sibling that we know of that's half or step or anything. One or both of them could have been born out of wedlock, but I'm not solid on that one. Both were not tight with their fathers, so kind of lacking a father figure, not real tight with their stepfathers either, it seems. Both had their own vehicles, and both tended to couch surf, let's say. I had spoken to that a couple days ago as like, maybe, perhaps, maybe, a chosen homelessness, enjoying staying at friends' houses, rather than staying at home. And that that's kind of common for a lot of teenagers, but it is really important for all of us, especially children, but for all of us to have consistency and stability, especially in the home. That's your main place for stability and consistency. Your other main places are your relationship and your work or school. So consistency in all three of those is what most of us would like to have and try to have and try to maintain. Any inconsistency in one of those is stressful. All three of them at the same time is disastrous. Even two of them at the same time is disastrous. So oh, where is the responsibility? Oh, here we go. Both of them have families and friends that are very defensive about anybody inquiring about what happened to them. Each one was missing a shoe or shoes. Both families set up GoFundMe accounts for the families. And in both cases, nothing is mentioned about the last few days of their lives. Conflicts, those types of things that you would expect in a missing persons case or in a death investigation. And also, apparently, both stepdads have pot growth operations. So I think that's about 30 altogether if you want to count them. My goodness. 
So why are these families so defensive? I think we really need to ask ourselves that. Of course, there are, they are going to be struggling. We would expect anybody in a situation like that to be struggling and to be sensitive about what people are saying. At the same time, I would think for most of us, our primary concern would not be what are people saying on Facebook. Hold on. I don't know who that was, so I just answered it and hung up. <laughs> it might be somebody I want to talk to, but I want to finish this. So I'll call them back later. Um, so in both of these cases, it seems like the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend is trying to play the victim. And that's a characteristic of a narcissist. It reminds me of an old Mad TV or SNL skit where they're in a drama class and the drama queen is trying to portray how even when other people are dying, it's all about her. And it's, you know, sarcastic. And, you know, that she just found out several people in her family have cancer or are dead. And she plays it up like, oh my goodness, why always me? Why always me? Why do these things keep happening to me? And, you know, it's, it's funny, not funny, and it's really just unbecoming, in my opinion, for somebody close to a person that is deceased to try to play the victim. Especially guys, guys that play the victim. And it's always these macho guys. Have you guys noticed that? It's always the macho guys who try to play the victim. But it really is a characteristic of a narcissist and a characteristic of a perpetrator to try to set it up so that they're the victim, to try to turn the tables. So let's talk about transparency and accountability because we don't seem to have that in Nevada County. And... I spoke earlier today about um, cameras, like traffic cameras and just business surveillance cams and home security system cameras. Where's all the footage of these two? And let's even add Paisley in there too from a year ago. Paisley, Trinity, and Kylie. Where's all the footage of their activities on the last day of their life or even going back a few days, the last several days of their lives. Because when you're, when somebody dies unexpectedly, you have to rule out homicide. That is basic, bare bones. You have to rule out homicide. And the first thing you wanna do is look at who might be upset with this person. Was this person in any arguments? Was this person having any conflicts? Was there anybody mad at this person? Was this person mad at anybody? <sighs> what about fire cams in Trinity's case? Would there be fire cams that might show her running down the street if she was, in fact, running down the street? So what about law enforcement following through on both arrests with Trinity's mother and with her fake aunt's boyfriend, Lucas. So Lucas was arrested four years ago for domestic violence and failed to comply with court orders. Trinity's mother was arrested two years ago for uh, driving under the influence and endangering a child. So what kind of follow-up was there with the child endangerment? I mean, I would think that Child Protective Services was involved but it's interesting because Trinity has essentially died from child endangerment and substance abuse. So, I mean, that just really hits right between the eyes, if you ask me. But the situation with this dude that was sitting on the bed with Trinity and her friend Hannah and her fake aunt Ashley, Lucas his story is sketchy. Ashley's story is sketchy that Lucas was coming over to bring me dinner. And then one of the fake nieces that I have up and dies. What? How does that work? 
How does that work? So I spoke yesterday about both Trinity and Kylie being deceased and discovered on Tahoe National Forest land. I have an address of where Paisley McConan, uh, what was the whole last name? I had it earlier. I have it in my notes. I have it everywhere. It's just hard to keep all these names in order. I'm sorry, let me just grab it again. Paisley McConan Woodard. I just like to try to be solid with that. Where was the location where Paisley McConan blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Paisley McConan Woodard? Where is the location where Madison Hannah Marie Felbert hit and killed Paisley McConan Woodard? I will look at the street and all that information again. It just crossed my mind this morning. What if it happened on Tahoe National Forest land? The way the Tahoe National Forest land is so broad and covers so much in Nevada County, it goes right up, almost right up to um, Trinity's fake aunt's house. But the road that Trinity's fake aunt Ashley lives on is like a horseshoe shape and part of that horseshoe shape goes into the land that is the Tahoe National Forest. And it's my understanding that that's where Trinity was found, was in national forestry. And we all know that this is very important because of the jurisdictions. That yes, you might still have the county sheriff helping out, you might still have the city police helping out, but it falls into a specialized jurisdiction that is not the FBI, but it's similar to the FBI, and they kind of get to do their own thing and do what they want. So it's very questionable. Shannon Moon, Sam Brown, and Christopher Stanyo all work for the Nevada County Sheriff's Department. So Sheriff Moon and deputies, uh, Deputy Stanyo and Captain Brown, they all worked on Kylie Rodney's case in August in September. And then Sheriff Moon, Captain Brown, and Deputy Stanyo all worked on Deputy Stanyo's estranged stepdaughter's missing person death investigation. You gotta ask yourself, WTF? Really? What are the chances? What are the chances? So I think that's all for this afternoon. Um, I did have one more question. Of course, there's always one more question, right? Oh, a couple of things. There's always a couple of things. Did Kylie, Trinity, maybe even Paisley, but primarily did Kylie and or Trinity have information that they weren't supposed to have? Is there a possibility that they knew too much? Like in Kylie's case, that the curiosity killed the cat? Like where did that come from on Lindsay Neiman's Etsy thing, site? Also, let's not forget that Sammy was partying at Boca with her little headlamp and her beer and all that jazz the day after Kylie was recovered, partying at Boca. At the time, most of us probably thought, well, that's in poor taste, and she's partying one uh, body of water over from where Kylie's tragedy happened. But as we're learning more, it seems as though something could have happened at Boca, that the whole... Prosser Creek Reserve was a sham, was a misdirect. So, you know, why do these parents tell these children, tell their children not to speak about what happened? Why the silencing? That is suspicious. And then there's that whole mass exodus thing. What was that about? And that was at Prosser. But then the family campground 
coordinator ranger person said that there was no party that night. It's so hard to follow, but we are not going to give up. We are not going to give up. So I'm going to sign off. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share if you feel so inclined. And I hope that you guys have a great afternoon. I hope you can have a lovely weekend as well. And do everything that you can for yourself. Do everything that you can for others. Try to make somebody's day. Whether that's just like with a compliment, like telling someone that their hair looks nice or something. Or, you know, cooking somebody dinner unexpectedly. Or taking somebody out for coffee unexpectedly. It really does a lot for yourself when you do a lot for somebody else. So try it if you haven't lately. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Take really good care of yourself. Drink your water. Eat your protein, fruits and veggies. You guys know. And stretch and exercise and deep breaths. Pray. Meditate. And just keep your focus. I'm going to keep my focus. My focus is Kylie Rodney and, yeah, Trinity Backus and Paisley McConan Woodard. There, I remembered that time. <laughs> Pop quiz time. All right, people. I appreciate you guys more than I can articulate. And thank you so much for watching my video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great weekend.